Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 13. In the last episode we completed Sea Stone Mission 34. And now after we're done preparing we're going to leave for Cocoon for the final battle. Alright so before we leave I'll give you guys a quick checklist on what you should uh, get taken care of. Note that all this is completely optional and you don't have to do it. It will just make your playthrough a lot easier. So first off, I would uh, complete Sea Stone missions 1 through 34. Now the reason I'm saying to do this now is because after completing certain Sea Stones, um, you can use their Sea Stone as a teleport, as a waystone to travel quickly through uh, Grand Pulse. This will make it a lot easier to navigate whenever you come back. And also you'll get some good items and CP rewards. After you've completed Sea Stone missions 1 through 34, I would suggest to uh, make sure you did at least um, 20 dig spots while riding a chocobo in the Archlight's Deep. Digging 20 times with the chocobo will get you the ribbon accessory, which is very rare, and it protects you against all status ailments by 25% when upgraded. Also, you'll get the achievement or trophy for digging up 20 items while on the chocobo at the Archlight Steep. Finally, um, I would suggest that you max out your character's current Crystarium Stage 9 for all their primary roles. This should take about 3 or 4 hours depending on how much you've been grinding since the beginning of the game. Um, but yeah, it should take you about 4, no longer than 5 hours. But I would suggest to max out your character's primary roles. You don't need to worry about their secondary. But go ahead and purchase all the crystals on the Crystarium for each character's primary roles. Because the enemies found in chapters 12 and 13 are no joke. They're really tough. <clears throat> Alright, so once you have your character's uh, primary roles maxed out on the Crystarium Stage 9, you can start working on their secondary roles. Now, my current battle team is Lightning, Vanille, and Fang, and I chose to progress all three of them really far down their Synergist roll. So they're almost maxed out. They're all on the uh, last stage of the upgrade. Now, I wouldn't recommend going any farther than this, because as you can see, the CP cost is a lot, 60,000 and 30,000. And then the final one is, yeah, 30,000, but some of them are 60,000 CP. So it's really not worth it right now because if you wanted to max out um, the Synergist roll completely for Lightning, Fang, and Vanille, it would take a fairly long amount of time to do that because we're just not getting enough CP after battles. Even at the grind spot, it takes a while. But I would at least recommend to advance them far enough um, so that they can reach the final um, stage on the upgrade for our Synergist. Now the reason why I do this is so that we can start setting up the Paradigm Rapid Growth, which is Synergist, 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 and also Even Dodds, which is Medic, Sabotar, and Synergist. These two roles will really help you out, especially Rapid Growth. With three Synergists at the start of the battle, your characters will be fully buffed out by um, within 30 seconds. If anything, at least make sure that you advance Fang far enough down the synergist roll so that she learns haste <clears throat> so that's not terribly far but it is a good amount now that's only if you have fang in your um battle team and you're not using saz because then you can replace fang with saz and fang's a lot better than saz in my opinion all right so finally i'll let you guys check out my equipment before we move on for lightning, I have a fully upgraded Inkindler, a fully upgraded Adamant Bangle, Aurora Scarf, and Sprint Shoes. And let me quickly tell you guys um, what these things do. The Inkindler can be upgraded from the Axis Blade, and the reason why I chose to upgrade that is for the ATB Charge 2. Pretty much after each battle, um, or during battle, lightning's ATB gauge will recharge and uh, after each hit so it's especially useful when using her in her commando role because every time she uses blitz and hits like three or four enemies at one time 
her ATV gauge will charge significantly, allowing her to <coughs> allowing her to attack constantly. Also, it adds a plus 5% ATV rate. This will allow the ATV rate to recharge faster in general. Next, we have the Adamant Bangle. Now, this can be upgraded from a Platinum Bangle and then transformed to a Diamond Bangle. Finally, upgrade the Diamond Bangle and transform it into the Adamant Bangle. Now, this increases maximum HP by 1500. So, this costs quite a, a good amount of gil, probably 450,000 gil to fully upgrade the adamant bangle but by doing this um your care your whoever you have it equipped to's hp will increase by 1500 this will make it a lot easier because your um party leader has high hp so they hardly get knocked out and it's very important because the party leader if the party leader ever gets knocked out it's a game over and you have to retry so i highly suggest to get the adamant bangle and upgrade it and equip it to your party leader Next up we have the Aurora Scarf which fully charges the wearer's ATB gauge prior to battle. So you can get this by um, fully upgrading the Whistlewind Scarf and then transforming it into the Aurora Scarf. Now what this does is it gives Lightning a full ATB gauge at the start of the battle allowing her to instantly attack um, with all of her attacks at the very start of the battle and it's really um, useful especially when fighting uh, weaker enemies because you can just completely destroy them before the battle even starts also it'll add a plus five percent to the ATB rate allowing her ATB rate to recharge faster so as you can see we're building up lightning around the same passive ability and increasing that ATB rate so pretty much lightning will be able to attack non-stop finally we have the sprint shoes which is auto haste so the sprint shoes are pretty difficult to get, um, but I explained it in detail on the previous episode. So if you want to know how to get auto haste at the start of battle and get the sprint shoes accessory, check back a couple episodes and I explain it in detail. And that will also add a plus 5% to her ATB rate, bringing her ATB rate charge up by a total of 15%. Moving on, we're going to talk about Vanille. Now Vanille has a fully upgraded Marlboro wand, so you can get this by fully upgrading the Belladonna wand and then transforming it into the Marlboro wand, and then fully upgrade that. Now the reason why I chose to upgrade the Belladonna wand into the Marlboro wand is because it has the passive ability Improve Debuffing. What this means is it allows, the, it allows Vanille to debuff any bosses a whole lot more effectively. So when in a Savitar, um, roll Vanille can debuff the boss with like D protect, slow, D shell, um, stuff like that. And the improved debuffing increases the chances of it sticking whenever Vanille casts it. So it's extremely useful. Now, moving on to the accessories, we have the Survivalist Catalog. Now, the Survivalist Catalog isn't really too impressive by itself, but when you equip it with a speed sash, you get the passive ability random instant chain now what this means is you have a small percent to instantly stagger any enemy so it's extremely useful so the survivalist catalog itself increases the odds of obtaining shrouds after battle and the speed sash restores a small amount of atb gauge each time an enemy is defeated so not only are we going to be getting shrouds after each battle but um each time vanille kills an enemy her atb uh, gauge will recharge slightly and when you use them together you get the random instant chain ability now if you don't have the survivalist catalog and you want the random instant chain so you can instantly stagger enemies you can use two speed sashes together and that will also give you the random instant chain passive ability take note that using the survivalist catalog by itself or the speed sash by itself will not give you the random instant chain ability you need to use them either together or you need to use two speed sashes all right so one more time the random instant chain will give you a small percent chance to instantly stagger any enemy and if you have this on two or more characters the chance of you instantly staggering an enemy increases 
Finally, we have the Sprint Shoes, which cast haste at the start of battle, so it's auto haste. Moving on to uh, Fang, we have a fully upgraded Calamity Spear. So you can get the Calamity Spear from transforming or fully upgrading the Pandoran Spear and then transforming it into the Calamity Spear and then fully upgrade that. Now the reason why I chose to upgrade the Calamity Spear or the Pandoran Spear into the Calamity Spear is because of the passive ability Improved Debilitation 2. Now this is just like Improved Debuffing that we talked about for Vanille. Fang can also be a Sabotar, and her Sabotar abilities are slightly different than Vanille's. So, the improved debilitation increases the effect of her sabotaging the enemy. So like Vanille casts Deprotect and Deshell, Fang is the one that casts like Slow and um, stuff like that. So it's good um, using Vanille and Fang together as Sabotars in the same battle team because they complement each other. Um, so like if Vanille is casting Deep Protect, Fang will cast Slow so that they're not casting the same thing at the same time. They complement each other and that's really good. Um, so yeah, the reason why we chose to upgrade the Calamity Spear for Fang is because of the improved de debilitation passive ability, which improves the chance of her debuffing the enemy successfully. Finally, um, we for accessories we have two speed sashes. So like I talked about for Vanille, with the survivalist catalog and the speed sash together, you'll get the random instant chain ability, which gives you a small percent a small percent chance to instantly stagger any enemy. And we're gonna go ahead and use two speed sashes with Fang because of the passive abilities kill ATV charge. So every time Fang kills an enemy, um, her ATV gauge will recharge slightly. And if, since you have two, the effect is doubled. And usually Fang is the one that kills the enemies because of her high strength. So it's better to equip two speed sashes onto Fang and then put the survivalist catalog in a speed sash to Vanille. That way um, Fang is getting the extra ATB charge after killing enemies. Finally we have the Sprint Shoes which cast Auto Haste at the start of battle. Alright so um, once Fang actually learns the Haste ability on her Synergist roll, you really don't need Sprint Shoes unless you're just fighting regular enemies which we're going to be fighting regular enemies but for bosses we're going to take the Sprint Shoes off um, because of uh, you know Fang has the haste ability so she'll be able to cast haste and casting haste the duration lasts longer than sprint shoes. So for boss battles of course we're going to change the accessories but the accessories I have now are just for regular battles. So I find these accessories to be the best for regular battles because not only do you instantly stagger an enemy sometimes allowing you to take them out really quickly but also you have sprint shoes so that you can um, have haste at the start of every battle and lightning has the adamant bangle so her HP is high just in case uh, you're fighting a strong enemy that does strong attacks lightning will be the last one up usually and I already talked about the weapons Alright, so other um, accessories that you should take note of is the Ribbon, which gives you the passive ability Resilience. It increases all status ailment resistances by 25%. So this is ex an extremely rare and hard to get accessory and it's extremely useful for some fights. Again, to get this um, accessory, all you have to do is dig up 20 choco uh, Chocobo treasures while on the Archlight Steep. And you unlock the chocobos after completing Sea Stone Mission 14. So for more information, check back on um, the previous episodes and I explain it in detail. Also, digging chocobo treasures, you get um, a pretty good chance of digging up really um, expensive items that you can sell at the store in order to get gill, such as gold nuggets and uh, choco uh, plush chocobos which sell for a good price at the store so you can get your gill up while getting the ribbon and also you get an achievement or trophy for that 
Finally, um, or more accessories you should take note of is the Entite Ring. This increases all elemental resistances by 10%, so when you upgrade it, um, your elemental resistance will be up by like 30% or 20%, something like that. It's excellent when fighting uh, bosses or enemies with high magic attacks. <clears throat> um, next up we have the charms, such as the fire charm, ice charm, lightning charm, water charm, wind charm, and earth charms. Now what this does is it occasionally absorbs the elemental damage as HP. So for each specific charm, you will occasionally absorb the elemental damage as HP. And it gives you the passive ability Random Ice Eater. So these things are really um, useful for certain fights and you can equip them as necessary. Now you can find most of these in the Archlight Steep in Treasure Balls. Some of them are hidden and some of them require chocobos to get to. So for all Archlight Steep treasures um, on foot and on chocobo you can check back on the previous episodes. I show where all treasure balls can be found in every area of Grand Pulse. And of course you already know about the speed sashes. I would suggest to get two more speed sashes. So not only can you equip two to Fang and two to Vanille, but you can equip two to Lightning as well. This will triple the chances of getting instant stagger. So when you're fighting an enemy significantly stronger than you, sometimes three, um, two speed sashes on each character are the way to go to instantly stagger that enemy so that you can defeat him when extremely under leveled. I suggest to get at least one collector catalog as it increases the odds of obtaining items after each battle. This will come useful. This will come in handy later on. Tetradicteras are all right, but you can mainly sell them for a uh, gill. But not only that, but they're pretty good accessories to have because they cast protect, shell, veal, and vigilance at the start of battle. You can get these, but it's a very rare drop from the Sea Stone Mission 8 and or sea stone mission 7 i'm sorry sea stone mission 7 will occasionally drop tetradic crowns and tetradic terras also sea stone mission 8 is an excellent way to farm gill in chapter 11 so if you want to know how to get a lot of gill in chapter 11 uh check back in the previous episodes and i show you the strategy for defeating sea stone mission 7 quickly and effectively and also how to sell the items for gill um the brooches are alright because it casts bar frost or, you know, um, bar fire, whichever uh, brooch you're looking at. Um, it casts the element or the ability when low on HP. So it could be very useful. I show you all the locations for these as well. Um, I suggest to get a couple rainbow anklets because it increases Daze resistance by 30% and Daze is one of the most annoying status ailments um, that you can get afflicted on you. But again, a ribbon will take care of that as well as all the others so a ribbon is really useful. But if you don't have that, I would suggest to get at least three rainbow anklets. You can buy them in the store by the way. Um, glass orb is useful because it increases slow resistance by 30 percent. You can find them in treasure balls as well. Metal armbands increases deep protect resistance by 30 percent. Everyone knows that deep protect, deep protect sucks because uh, you take double the damage when under deep protect status. So you should have plenty of these. There's more than enough to go around here. Um, and all the other ones are just pretty much increases element resistance by 25%. Um, the Royal Omelet is really good because you can upgrade it. And what it does is it increases both physical and magical resistance by 5%. When upgraded, you'll have the physical and magical resistance boost. I think it gets up to like 10 or 15%. So these are really good because uh, when fighting enemies that have both strong physical and magical attacks, Royal Omelets upgraded will save the day. 
a witch brang witch's brangle or witch's bracelet is very good because it increases magic resistance by 15 percent when you upgrade it it's even more stronger so this is pretty much all the elemental attacks combined into one it reduces them all by 15 percent so go ahead if you have this start upgrading it it's very useful Rune bracelets are good because it increases magic resistance by 10% but it's nothing on a witch's bracelet, especially fully upgraded. Black belts are useful because of their physical resistance by 10%. Um, a sorcerer's mark is okay but if you have one of these, uh, whenever you get the right gill I would suggest to upgrade it, transform it, upgrade it again and then transform it and finally upgrade it again. You can get it up to increase your magic by like 350 points. So uh, if you have Sorcerer's Marks, I suggest to hold on to them for later in the game when we start upgrading accessories to the max. They're really going to come in handy. Same thing goes for the Warrior Wristband as for the um, Sorcerer's Mark. It can be upgraded constantly with a lot of gill. It costs a lot of gill. But you can get your uh, strength up by 350 or 300. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about how to get any accessories I've shown here or how to upgrade any weapons, um, you can check back on my previous episodes. I explain them all in detail. And the most important thing is to make sure that you've completed Seastone missions 1 through 34. Because once we uh, travel to Cocoon, you won't be able to come back for Grand Pulse, to Grand Pulse for a while. And when we do eventually come back, we're going to start working on Seastone Mission 35. And if you're wondering why I stopped that Seastone Mission 34, because it's very possible to keep going. The monsters aren't that hard, or the marks aren't that hard, so it's really possible to keep going. But the main reason why I stopped that Seastone Mission 34 is because everything past 34 is has to do with the Titan's Trials. So if you're unfamiliar with the Titan's Trials, once you start, it's really hard to back out of it. So that's why we're leaving it all for later. And towards the end of the Titan's Trials, you're going to want to be at max Crystarium with everything maxed out in order to stand a chance in those kind of fights. So we're going to go to Cocoon, beat the final boss get our crystarium expanded to stage 10 which is the final stage for the English version for Japanese you can go one more extra so we're gonna since we're playing the English version we're gonna go to the the final boss beat him so that we can get our crystarium expanded to stage 10 and then I'm gonna show you guys an excellent way to get CP we're gonna max out all characters crystarium and then I'm gonna show you an excellent way to get um gill and we're gonna get everyone's ultimate weapon fully upgrade it to their Omega weapons and we're going to fully upgrade the best accessories in the game to boost our character stats all the way up and then we're going to take out the hardest sea stone mission marks but all of that can't be done until we beat the final boss which is where we're going now so I, I would suggest to get good equipment like I have shown here fully max out everyone's um, Crystarium at stage 9 and start working on their secondary roles and then make sure that you have Seastone missions 1 through 34 completed. Alright, so that's going to take care of all the preparations. I'll see you guys next time where we leave for Cocoon.